this this mission trip to Haiti got started uh, through a family member. He uh, he sponsors a um, an orphanage in Haiti, which we're at right now. Um, he started it a few years ago, um, and through my family connections, he expressed a, a need for um, his security team to be trained. Um, and so I just decided that the Lord was uh, calling me to come help. And I told him I, anything that I could do, I would I help. I heard about this mission trip to Haiti through a friend of mine and firearms student, uh, Marshall Chipley. When I was visiting him in South Carolina, he had told me about uh, a trip he was planning on taking to Haiti to help train up security guards. I think he had a, an understanding of how dangerous and how serious it was of a trip to head down there, especially going by himself. I had reached out to my friends and the people in the community to see if they'd be supportive of helping us raise the money to, to make the trip down there because it was going to cost us a lot of money to even go. Um, and through Facebook and things like that, friends immediately responded and with, within four hours we had enough money raised and we contacted another SEAL friend of mine, uh, Shannon and his brother Chris and those guys within a few days raised up enough money also so the four of us were going to head down. You know, I'd, I'd briefly heard Marshall speaking about this trip on one of, at one of our training courses. Um, once I saw that it was going to go ahead and go, of course I immediately wanted to be involved when I heard of the situations going on. Uh, once I seen their post on Facebook about about coming to know, Haiti Rich. to help Haiti. out, um, I just had a an urge, a, a drawn sense of urgency that I needed to go with them. Um, contacted Shannon and said, "Hey, would they be glad to have me?" and and I'm blessed to say that yes, they. I'm glad they invited. I have to go to the vet and take her to get her health certificate and then <laughs> once I get the health certificate I then have to send it off to the um, USDA for them to sign off on it and then I have to have another person sign off on it. The uh, Haitian consulate. The Haitian consulate. In Orlando. So you gotta pay all three of these people to basically look at the paper and go, yep, that rabies shot. Good to a, go. There's a rabies shot. Um, was there any word on the uh, the situation as far as us being able to get our firearms down there? The trip to Haiti, we were supposed to be able to carry our firearms for protection. Less than 12 hours to our leaving for Haiti, we found out that the paperwork we submitted, there was a kink in it or whatever the reason was, we weren't going to be able to fi carry firearms anymore. So it left us in a position where we were going to have to travel to Haiti slick or with no protection. It's been kind of an emotional roller coaster. You know, at first I was really excited and then um, I found out that they were going slick, you know, no guns. So I was like down here. And then a few days ago he um, was talking to their point of contact down in Haiti and said that they were able to bring their guns, so I was like back up here, and then yesterday he said, no, nope, no guns, you know, it was a miscommunication, misunderstanding, so, and I was back down here, and just pretty worried about the whole thing, um, but, you know, I've been trying to be super positive about it. So what's happening here, Rich? Well, we uh, came in late from our previous flight because they got delayed. And then uh, we're checking into JFK thinking we're doing our transfer to the next flight um, to head down to Haiti. But apparently uh, they didn't get the memo that we were coming because Delta shut down for the night. So we're sitting out in the lobby of the airport sleeping on the tile floor because there's... <laughs> 
no one here to take our bags so we can check in. But we got a really nice view, so I think it actually worked out better. <laughs> As we approached the northern coastline of Haiti, it seemed strange to think that this was a dangerous place where people were suffering. From 20,000 feet, it looked like a resort island. The curving coastline, Akabu water, beautiful mountains we were passing over did not seem to fit the stories I knew of Haiti. But as we approached Port-au-Prince, reality started to set in. What looked like roofs were rea in reality were tents and tarps, and many buildings were still shattered and condemned. You could still see the aftermath of the earthquake, even though two years has already passed. As we entered the airport, it was quite chaotic. Thankfully, there was some Haitians playing live music by the door that helped lighten the mood. Customs did not allow us to film inside, so the cameras had to be cut off. But no one dared turn off the canine's camera, so I politely did so. The Haitians are quite scared of the canines. Dogs are not pets here, so when they see working dogs, they become very weary. People got out of the way, the war beast and I, and it worked out quite well. We met up with Pastor Sean and a high school student named Ricky here in the airport. This was Ricky's first time on a plane and his first time out of the country. We all stood around and had a good laugh at that. After battling the chaos of the airport and everyone shouting in Haitian to take your bag, give you a ride, and whatever else they were trying to say, we finally got to our vehicle and we were on the road to the orphanage. Driving is one of the most dangerous tasks of this trip. Many things can happen. Gang members ride on scooters and motorcycles and can ambush you in traffic. This leads to robberies, hostage taking, or worse, getting attacked. People, mostly teenagers, were coming up to the windows and asking for items of ours in the traffic. This is dangerous because teenagers can be lower level gang members and initiate attacks or signal people to follow us after looking into the vehicle up close and letting them know that we have something of value. This is what the war beast was for, to keep people away from the vehicle. It became a judgment call of mine though, to keep her at ease and draw less attention to the vehicle and not be the white guys whose dog almost ripped the kid's face off for coming up to the window. As we moved through the city, you could see everyone hustling, busy, trying to make ends meet, but failing to do so. The tension is thick and the stress is real. There's lots of motion and it's amazing to me that people who look so eager to work are barely getting by. As soon as we arrived at the orphanage, we dropped our bags and got straight to work. Shannon and Chris had already arrived and it was great to see that they did not run into any problems either. We took a walk around the orphanage inspecting how we would break into it. This helps us find the weak points and areas most likely to be breached. Since the attack on the orphanage, the exterior walls had been raised, razor wire was added, and two guard stands were built. The orphanage was starting to look more like a prison than a house for children. We traveled to another orphanage to provide the same services to them. This facility was much bigger and had armed guards that greeted you at the gate. It was the running standard down here to have a fortress to protect your children and supplies. But even this in Haiti only gets you so far. This orphanage was robbed just months before we came also. They had off-duty police officers working their security. Surprisingly enough, all three police officers forgot to come to work on the same day. Same time, a local gang came through a carpet over the razor wire and broke in. The three officers did not get in trouble for this. So needless to say, some of the police are working hand-in-hand -hand with the criminals. So this compounds the challenges we're facing down here. Alright, so this, now I want you to really crank it up, alright? What's that? Is that good? What's that? Begin. There you go. Ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. All the way down. My body still safe, you know what I mean? So why say there was someone at the end of the hall here? I couldn't get out there. 
but this hallway allowed me to move out. A guy pops out around that corner. I'm here, excuse me, I'm shooting back. Bang, 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 bang. He steps back into that room. There's two thought processes. I can just run and just make noise, right? With my gun, which doesn't do us any good. Yeah. Well, it's depending. Like that is a strategy. I can just run and try to just get out. Or, or the second thing I could do is I come here. He steps out, and now I go. And I'm here, and it's bouncing a little bit. But as soon as he comes out, I can now continue to move forward because I'm not going to turn around and run back. Yeah. We were tasked with training the security staff of the orphanage where we were staying. These young men had great attitudes, but did not know anything about security tactics or weaponry. Guns are illegal in Haiti, so most of the civilians have no idea how to hold, aim, or even shoot one. And it showed. Basic tasks like putting the bullets in the magazine had to be taught to these guys. The irony of uh, all this is that the crimes are still committed with guns. Just like in the USA, drugs are illegal, yet every high school kid can get drugs if they want, and with a few phone calls, the same thing with the guns down here in Haiti. By the Haitian government disarming the law-abiding citizens, these uh, people down here are now sheep to the slaughter for these local gangs. One security guard we were training uh, only had half an ear. He told us about how he got stopped walking home by a gang and held at gunpoint while another member cut half of his ear off with a knife just for fun and to send fear into the community. There you go. Aim out here. You're striking like this. Like this. Come in. Yeah. Drive. I'm, I'm driving with my body weight. So, not so much arms. Guys, it's gonna hurt. Yeah, it's gonna be. Even if you lightly, even if you lightly hit him, it's gonna hurt. Man. You can see, you can see the dings in the wood. You know, it's solid wood. If you do that on someone's face, it's gonna, your face is gonna explode. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Take this. Because if, it, if it's uh, up high, tap through. So if I'm here, I'm going to get 45. I'm trying not to get tap If I'm here, I can turn. Boom. Right? And here. Boom. Yeah. So you so you face you face me and you're kind of turning. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Oh, 
Ich habe die schöne Wand gefleischt. Ich will da, ich will da. Hier. Und die. Strike. Strike. Very slow. Not being used to that much. Only exposing a little bit of my body at a time. Not being used to that much. Until I can see all the way down the wall. Bang! If I was here, we see that. Or grab the weapon. Okay, you have to do that. Okay. Bang. Bang. I come like this. Bang. Mm. And then right here, still bang. Okay. Bang. Bang. Alright? Yeah. This is a strike. Mm. Then I shoot from here. Okay? Nice and tight. To get my body. To absorb the impact. To stabilize the weapon. Okay? Shoot here. Bang! The key to this is not exposing your whole body. If somebody's there with a gun and I do this and look, then they can shoot my leg. They can shoot my shoulder. So I'm exposing just enough to, so my gun and my line of sight is the only thing coming around. Okay? Okay. So then if I see them, then I can engage right away with, with minimal amount of my body in danger. Okay? No, this is not a speed situation. I think I said one should be up in one thing to get the other. Okay? Tell me to point the gun at the other one. You're watching right here. Okay. 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 For me to make sure the gun's safe, I take the magazine out. See the bullet? And now I rack. Now this is a, this is important. If I rack, right? And then I take the magazine out. There's still a bullet. We taught them a class on firearms, how to operate, how to load and shoot them. Then we took them outside and let everyone take a few shots. This was the first time any of these guys had actually even shot a gun, even though they were carrying them on security. Yeah. Huh?
I look at this. Ready, step on there. Ready? Yeah. My stance. Lean forward. Here. This means empty. For you, right handed? Empty. Yep. Now, this finger stays out. Here. Tell him to squeeze more with his left hand than his okay. right hand. Extend, no, 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 keep here. Extend his arms out. Extend his arms out. Lean forward just a little bit. Tell him to look at the front sight. Put it in between. The block is in the background, but his focus is on the front sight. Relax, breathe, squeeze the trigger. Tell him it's like, uh, you know, baseball? You don't swing the bat and stop when you hit the ball. You swing all the way through, hit the ball, and keep swinging. Okay. All the way through. Okay. So when I shoot, bang, all the way through. Bang, all the way through. I need to follow. I need to follow through. Okay. So don't go bang, bang. No. No. Okay. Boom. 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 Good. Keep the gun. Okay, tell them I keep the gun here when I'm working my magazine and all that stuff because this allows me to see everything. Okay. Right? I can see what's happening. I can see my gun. I can do this. I see you, but I do this. If I go here, just like at the game, now I can't see anything because I'm looking down. So keep it here in front of you. So I can see everything as I go. Okay. Yep. Rack. Good. There we go. Okay. Hey, hey, watch where you're pointing the gun. Yep. Gun up. There you go. Magazine out. Good job. Good job. Good shot. All the way in. Good. That's good. Okay. Press this button. Finger, finger, finger. Yep. Press this button. Okay. Forward. Okay. This goes okay. Remember, right here in your chest. All right. Aim at the at the brick. Go. Good. Nice. There you go. Okay. I'm really glad we got to train these guys. I'm afraid that if we didn't. They might have got themselves killed in a real attack because they would not know how to operate the firearm they are carrying. Also, this would mean that the guards are out of the picture and now the gangs would have a clear shot at the orphanage again. So we can all sleep a little easier now knowing that these guys at least have a foundation to work off of in a real life situation. Yeah! Good.
At night we would go to orphanages and churches where Pastor Sean would put on a small version of his Team Impact show for the kids. He would rip phone books in half, roll frying pans, squeeze soda cans till they burst and do all this stuff with his bare hands. It was incredible. And the kids would go nuts over it. Then he would connect his actions to his spiritual walk and he would, you know, show them how he was in touch with God and, and send the kids a good message. Needless to say, the nights were pretty exciting. population is under 14 years old and between 750,000 and 1 million children in Haiti are orphans. Here most of these children lost their parents in the earthquake but some of the parents during the devastation just could not provide for them and in fear they dropped them off at the front doors of these orphanages hoping that the orphanage will provide a better and brighter future than what they could provide. Still the children that we came in contact seem to have high spirits and big hearts. They had huge smiles and would soak up every ounce of attention that you were willing to give them. They loved having their pictures taken and then having us sh show them on the screen. For many of them, this is the first time or the only time they ever get to see what they look like. It was fun to watch everyone hanging out and playing with the kids, even though most of us had no idea what they were saying. But it was still cool to hear their funny songs and to see their personalities come out. Knowing the main dangers, we spent a lot of time focusing on gun disarms and fighting against machete attacks. They were excited to learn and you could tell how important this was to them as we trained on the rubble and the concrete slab while they were still in their church clothes, they did not care one bit. Yeah. So if the person you're trying to protect needs to be behind you. Well obviously what they does with the ale. But it's our it's our responsibility to put ourselves in that spot, not their responsibility to get behind us. So this is I push if I push I don't want to do this. I don't want to be soft. Yeah. It needs to be sharp. Hey, leave us alone. You know, back up. And now I'm telling him, I'm, I'm warning him, I didn't punch him. I didn't strike him. And now, now he has, now he understands. I want to get to Shannon, I got to fight. Right? Give me your money. Give me your money. Give right. me your money. This is what I want. Okay? So, I want this close. Go ask them what is the advantage of having a gun? Ask what is the advantage of him having a gun? Ça n'a pris le sous des cons ça. Elle pris le sous des sous des stomach des cons ça. Why would you want a gun over a knife? So I have this, you have that. Distance. Bang, bang. Two. Right? Okay. So, what I want is for him to come in and go. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? So, I want him close because if he takes 10 steps back, 
I can't, you. I can't get the gun. I can't. Just pied. Yeah. This is this is this is bad for me. This is bad, but it's better. Now I can fight. Two things. Two things to understand here. If he has the gun, I'm the good guy. I want to be close. If I get the gun, right? If I if I get the gun, I want to create space. If he's far away, I don't want to be a tough guy because I can't take the gun. So I let him think he's winning. I'm sorry, I, I, what, do you, what is it you want? I'm, I'm giving you money. I said give me your money. Okay. Is, is that real? Yes, is that real? Don't show your kids at home. I want to I wanna draw him <laughs> in. I'm like <laughs> frantic. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even. Okay, okay, okay. okay. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 But I, don't, I don't want to do this. Yeah, you want my money? Go take it. Yeah, I'll give you my money. Give me your money. Give, give me your money. money. Bang! Bang! Right? Like my body language is telling him, like, yeah, I'm gonna give you my money, but I have the I have the intention to fight you. I turn and come in. I'll trap. I'll strike. I'll break. Strike, strike, bam, bam. And here, Man. here, and I get inside. And punch down. With some, uh, I'm not do I each day we walked over to a half-standing school, which is now a makeshift church, to train over 30 pastors in hand-to-hand -hand combat. This was one of the most intriguing parts of the trip for me. In America, we don't necessarily think of pastors as being physical warriors, but in Haiti, being a pastor is a little bit different. In a country run by gangs, voodoo, and corrupt government, these pastors need to be strong. And after recent incidences, they are ready to take a stand. I was told the story of why we were asked to come down to Haiti. The pastor that was housing us a few months back had a breach in his orphanage. A gang climbed over the wall late at night, catching the security guard sleeping. They took a shotgun from him and shot him in the head, killing him. They then took the keys off of him and entered the orphanage. Once inside, they captured the pastor and his wife, beat both of them almost to death. Meanwhile, they raped his 15-year-old daughter. After this, they stole the beds, food, shower supplies, everything. When the police came, uh, they said they found the man who shot the uh, guard and who had done all these horrible things. They said they did put him in jail for a couple hundred bucks. The pastor refused to pay the police to put the man in jail, so the charges never got filed. That is the way things work. So, now they are ready to fend for themselves. Yes. Yeah! yeah. yeah. See how it hurts, right? I use this, it hurts. So from here, boom, boom, boom. Take that. Good, good. 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 Push. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
We met with another pastor and his family across town at their orphanage. They were American and white, so they really stand out. Their concern was kidnapping, or what we call in the SEAL teams for adults, snatch. Uh, they have a huge revenue stream for the gangs in Haiti with this. The problem is you pay the ransom or they just kill you and go snatch someone else. Makes no difference to them. The pastor had volunteered for an extended amount of time in Haiti and brought his whole family with him. Also, the staff had other Americans that were college students who were there working as missionaries and he wanted to keep them safe as well. We had a lot of fun training with them and it was a lot easier since there was no language barrier. Hello. Because out on the bottom tells you how much. Really, you're me trying to do this and just stop it, like do it harder. See? You know what I mean? If I just try to do this, it's not, it's not necessarily gonna work. If I just try to stop it, you see a lot of this. And I'll do it again. I'll do it this way. Like if he throws that hard, he's gonna punch right through my arm. So another version of my cut. I'm here. Like I'm cutting through. I'm gonna try to hack his arm off with my forearm. So he comes in again. How's that feel? <laughs> now, we got that on video, I did one thing wrong. It's just out of habit. What we don't want to do in a lot of martial arts, and I'm still breaking through this mentally myself, is when when we strike, because uh, through Kapap and other things like that, like Prey Manus, Kung Fu, they open their hands and they flex this when they strike. And Naka, they teach to keep that hand closed so that if I have this in my hand, and I do that, I don't go, because my instinct is to open my hands when I strike. So, you want to keep those hands closed, so it's here, and I cut through, just like this, and I try to keep that closed if possible, right? So, it's a strike through. And you'll see, after you do that, and someone tries to hook, if they hook hard and you push into it, you're like, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> but it's really good, so that if someone goes to strike to you, and you hack, and they're going to hook you. Bam! And just drill through that, then they're, they're going to think twice like, man, well, and then now they're going to try to like negotiate with you to come with them or whatever, you know what I mean? Because they're going to be like, every time I try to touch this person, it hurts, you know? <laughs> He was getting ready to do uh, a trip to Haiti to help. Oh! Oh! <laughs> All right, Sal, Sal, Sal. Sal. Yeah, awesome. It's crazy down here. It's nuts. All right, take two. For me personally, um, getting tell, involved. Tell, tell them who you are. I want... They want to know. I'm Shannon Rush. I'm sure a lot of you know who I am, but for those of you that don't, I'm the other seal that um, Rich is talking That's about. Chicken. So we're, we're out back yesterday and all these chickens are running around and, uh, and there's this one rooster who just has this horrible, horrible and you can just tell he's like the, ra the raspiest, out most outcasted chicken of the group around here. and. Uh, we're getting ready for dinner, and all of a sudden everyone starts realizing, like, where do all these chickens go? You know what I mean? Like, man, this chicken is great. This is really good. And then someone's like, yeah, dude, I saw them out back. Like, they literally grabbed some of the chickens in the backyard and just wrung their neck and cut their head off. And, dude, we're eating the chickens that were in the backyard. Like, this is the real deal. You know? So the, the one rooster comes up while we're eating dinner, and he's, like, by the window doing his, his horrible crocodile do. Rah! Here at dinner, I start translating what the, what the chicken right. saying. It's like, it's like, hey, Suzanne! Guys! Where is everybody? <laughs> he keeps doing it. And everyone's like... This isn't funny everyone's anymore. He's looking at their dinner like... This is the chickens we've been watching run around the yard all day. And everyone started feeling guilty about eating their dinner. We were not the only ones on the trip. Pastor Leslie ran the orphanage that we were staying at along with Pastor Wes. We had Pastor Sean, Pastor Rick, and Pastor John come to help teach the Haitian pastors in a conference. Also, Ricky, Josh, Chris, Daniel, uh, a couple other guys came 
to help any way they could. Mostly construction, they fixed doors, the door frames that were broken the, uh, in the attack. They built the shed, among many other projects. Becky and Jenna also joined providing medical attention and physical attention with the kids. It was a good group of volunteers. Everyone had a great attitude. It was ambitious about helping out any way they could. Each night we finished up with a round table discussion and uh, Pastor Sean led, you know, uh, spiritual lessons and talks. And it was very interesting to get different people's perspectives on the environment around us and what we're actually doing and how we're impacting and, and how what we were providing was actually impacting us as well. Yeah, uh, a little bit more about the kids. All the kids here at the orphanage, they have no parents. They've either lost them in an earthquake or any other way, they're murdered, whichever way. Most of these kids have just been dropped off at the gate for them to take care of. Um, that's a lot of how this orphanage got started. These people were just dropping off because they know the pastor here was able to take care of them. And that's pretty well how this orphanage got started. The first day we were here, they didn't know how to take us. You know, they just stood way back, off behind, behind the gates and just kind of looked at us. Um, as soon as we broke out our cell phones, started taking pictures and videos, um, one little girl stands out for me is, what was her name, Shannon, Imelda? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that was her name. Um, she was the first one to come out. As soon as we started taking pictures and videos of her, the next thing you know, you're, you're so focused on taking pictures and videos of her, then you turn around and every kid in the orphanage is hanging on you, standing, stand, they just engulf you because they want that attention. They want to feel loved. Um, and it, 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 it kind of made, it, not to sound selfish, but it made me feel really good knowing that I could give them that attention and see how much they appreciate it. Um, like, like we were saying, there's no technology here. So just breaking out a simp something as simple as your cell phone and taking pictures and showing it to them, or you know, taking videos of them singing songs, and putting it on them and then turn around showing them that video, they were ecstatic, ecstatic to see that. Um, it made them happy. Just so, it's just the smallest things that, that make a big difference down here, the smallest things. Um, I never really, like I was saying before, I never really um, got in any serious emergency situations, but even the people that I bandaged, just the smallest things, putting band-aids on something or wrapping a wound, um, you could just see how much they appreciated that. Appreciated that. Um, so, like I was saying, medical supplies, food, um, antibiotics as far as medical supplies, and any other bandaging stuff, neospore and stuff like that, it's, it's, it's a great need here, great need.